1 Kings 11 1 43, through the Bible. Chapter 11. Theme, The Shame and Death of Solomon. Solomon is the most colossal failure in the pages of Scripture. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, Luke 12 48. He had the greatest opportunity of any man who ever lived. He began by failing to remove false religion, 1 Kings 3 3. What was at first only a spot is now a plague of leprosy. He had a harem of 1,000 wives, pagan women, who turned his heart away from the Lord. For this reason God stirred up enemies against Solomon and allowed Jeroboam to rise to prominence and finally split the kingdom. Solomon forsakes God. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, 1 Kings 11 1. As far as women were concerned, Solomon was patterning his life after his father David. It is too bad he did not pattern his life after other areas of David's life, but he did not. Remember that Solomon had been brought up in the king's palace. He was sort of an effeminate fellow, unaccustomed to the rough and rugged life that David had known. Solomon began to gather women, just as someone else might have a hobby of gathering antique automobiles. He collected women of all nationalities. Now these women turned the head of Solomon, causing him to go into idolatry and to permit it in the land. He violated God's prescribed law at this particular point. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, Solomon clave unto these in love, 1 Kings 11 2. I think this is the one place in scripture where the word love can be changed to sex. That was Solomon's motive. He had been raised in the women's palace and had never known anything rough or manly. When he became an adult, Solomon spent his time gathering women. He was accustomed to their company. He was a dandy. He was like many men we have in our society today. God is going to deal with him in this connection. The Lord did not approve of what Solomon did, for the scripture says. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake which I have chosen, 1 Kings 11 9-13. The Lord was angry with Solomon. Let's be fair with the Word of God. There are those who say, Oh, look, God permitted Solomon to have a thousand wives. The record gives us the number accurately, that is history. But God's attitude toward it is also revealed. The Lord was angry with Solomon. The Lord said that He would not rend away all of the kingdom from Solomon. One tribe would be left for Solomon's son. That one tribe, I would say, was Benjamin. Solomon was a member of the tribe of Judah, naturally that tribe would also stand with him. So Benjamin and Judah were in the division that will go with the family of David. The other ten tribes in the north will follow Jeroboam. Solomon is chastened. Now we come to the time at the end of Solomon's reign. God begins to stir up trouble for this man. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked, Esau. 5721. Solomon had enjoyed peace. Now for the first time during his reign there was to be warfare. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, he was of the king's seed in Edom, 1 Kings 11 14. Next we are introduced to Jeroboam. And Jeroboam the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Zareda, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo, and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father. 
And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph, 1 Kings 11 26-28. Although Jeroboam was the son of a servant, Solomon recognized that he was a young man of considerable ability and talent. Solomon, therefore, elevated him to a high position and made him overseer of his public works. And it came to pass at that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah the Shilonite found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they two were alone in the field, and Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it in twelve pieces, and he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee, but he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. 1 Kings 11 29-32. Ahijah the prophet took Jeroboam's new garment and tore it into twelve pieces. He gave ten pieces to Jeroboam and said to him, God is going to give you ten tribes. The kingdom is going to be divided. Why would God divide Israel into two kingdoms? Because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtoreth the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh the god of the Moabites, and Milcom the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father, 1 Kings 11 33. The prophet continues with his message. For David's sake, God will not take the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon but he will take it out of the hand of Solomon's son and give ten tribes to Jeroboam. After these things, Jeroboam is forced to flee for his life. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose, and fled into Egypt, unto Shishak king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon, 1 Kings 11:40. Solomon's death. And the rest of the acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead, 1 Kings 11 41-43. We will see more of the Acts of Solomon and his wisdom in 1 and 2 Chronicles. He was a colorful ruler in the sense that he accumulated so much of this world's goods. Everything in the kingdom denoted wealth, affluence, and prosperity. In the New Testament our Lord refers to the glory that was Solomon's. There was indeed an earthly glory in his kingdom.